Hello and welcome to another episode of Sonic Touch, uh, the programme dedicated to making music on touch devices. I'm Nick Bat, editor of Sonic State. And I'm Gaz Williams. But before we do anything else, uh, I wanted to say, you know, we have obviously focused a lot on iOS and we have got something to look at from Android and that is Caustic, which is a kind of multi-instrument sort of like Reason Rebirth kind of a thing, something along those lines, I yeah, would say. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's got a, a Reason influence in the way it's laid out. So here uh, is the sort of main screen. Uh, we've got various different devices, up to eight devices. No. So here is the main screen. Uh, we've got various different devices and synthesizers, uh, a sequencer page, which kind of gives us the sort of uh, pattern-based song sequencing. Mm -hmm. I come back here, we've also got a mixer, which gives us little mixer uh, type um, features. So it's a six track sequencer then, and you can decide Yeah, it's kind of like Reverb, re Reason Rebirth, mm -hmm. uh, very, on a very basic level. It's mm -hmm. all done in step time. Mm -hmm. uh, if I switch the actual sequence and play it, you can hear what's going on, and I come back out. Um, we can maybe have a look at uh, we've got this kind of Rhodes PCM type uh, sound, which mm -hmm. I could play things in if I felt uh, so compelled. It's, mm -hmm. it, it does demonstrate the latency of the uh, Android sort of setup a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I take that out solo, and we come down to uh, one of the synths now. Messing with the, uh, they've got different kind of filters here, you know. So there's a little bit of synthesis going on. It's quite sort of for an Android device. It's actually pretty advanced. We come out of here. Uh, we've got some beats happening. If I can find the uh, drum machine, that is right here. So it's just tight kit. I uh, put solo. So we just hear. You know, sort of classic 909 type thing. There are various different. Uh, you're whisking me back to 1991 at the moment, Nick. Oh, yeah. Check that out. <laughs> Very funky. I mean, it, it's... We're looking at this on... This is my HTC... Uh, I can't even remember what it is now. Is it a it's a desire? No, it's not a desire. It's... Uh, Ah, oh, 1X, that's right. So it's got quite a lot of CPU power in it for a phone. I'd imagine on a tablet or whatever, it'd be much more kind of impressive. The output is fairly low. I've had to boost the inputs here, so it's not kind of quite as uh, as, as loud as, say, the iPad or the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So I'll just take you back through a few other things. I mean, you can scroll up and down between all the bits and pieces. Uh, you've also got... Uh, uh, a sort of pedal mode, which is kind of cool. So I can add uh, a pedal into one of these things. Let's uh, let's try a bit crusher, and then uh, that's on the square. So if I go back to square, I should be able to listen to that by going to solo on it. Oops, I have to go up here. Uh, so if we go solo, we can listen to that. It's pretty. Uh, <laughs> then I can I can edit the edit the. Uh, gosh, it's very clunky. I have to say, I'm finding it a little bit less. Uh, there we go. Uh, I can edit the settings. I'm presuming. Can I edit the settings? Sort of. It's a little bit fiddly on this tiny phone. Yeah. Oh, I'll stop that. <laughs> it is a kind of. It's not the sort of musical experience I particularly enjoy. But mm -hmm. I'm guessing if you're sitting on a long train journey and you want to sort of, you know, thumb in a few step patterns or what have you, you mm. can get some little grooves going and mm. you can sequence it up into sort of song mode. I think it's also possible you can uh, export a song. Uh, well, that's if I get the full version, of course, I could mm -hmm. do that. That means I could get it out into the outside world. But you know, how much is how much is it? It's only a fiver. Right. Okay. So you know, it's not. It's it's it's. It, it, What's good about it is the mm. fact that it's actually in Android, it's working, it's got multiple devices, it's showing some pretty interesting kind of um, synthesis capabilities, so it's, it's, it's bringing the cause a little bit further. <laughs> Let's hear it for Android. <laughs> so that's Caustic 2 uh, by Single Cell Software. You can get it on the Google Play Store for about £5.29. But I suppose it does kind of show, in a way, with the iOS uh, world, we've been spoiled a bit with uh, some really, really high quality apps. And the one that springs to mind uh, is like Nano Studio, which works so well on the iPhone and the, the, the user interface is just really nice to use. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But the point is, is you know, we're, there aren't that many options for Android. Yeah. And just the fact that somebody has put the effort in to make this and, and you yeah. know, with synthesis functions and those things is a great thing. So well worth checking out. If you've got an Android phone, you probably yeah. will need it to have a little bit of grunt, though. One of the early Androids probably 
probably won't do it. <laughs> and I think it's probably for you techno monsters out there. <laughs> yeah. And I do know that people can make a lot better music than I possibly can with that. <laughs> Step sequencing on a tiny little screen is really not my forte, I must admit. This week, we're going to take a focus on to things that control Ableton Live. Ableton Live has been around for a while now. It's one of the most popular DAW software uh, for Mac Yeah, lots of real-time control. There's kind of dedicated mm -hmm. hardware for it. Uh, right. We've got quite a lot of apps, actually, that will control it as well, over mm -hmm. either sort of just via MIDI control or dedicated specifically. Yes, absolutely. And with, uh, with the launch of Ableton Live 9, they're actually launching a, a dedicated hardware unit called the Push. Yeah, it looks very tasty. Uh, actually built by Akai. Mm -hmm. And so it got us thinking about, you know, what... Uh, touch control uh, is already around that could possibly give a similar kind of function to the forthcoming push. And we've got a couple of possibilities for you, is that right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Two that we found that were really cool is um, touchable and lines grid. That's line with two eyes and grid, grid. with two eyes. It's kind of like time stretch. Time stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, and these really kind of both have some similarities and 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 that kind of revolves around the the, the clip launch so we can look at I have, this i have a clip launch here there's, yes. the, there's the clip uh, so you've got the various different clips in the matrix as you would expect yes and they are this what is it the one we're looking at here yes we're looking at touchable here now this is connected to the computer over an ad hoc network well, so we've, we've shown how we've to, shown to do, how that do that before yeah yeah so uh so now I can just basically, I can touch on any of these uh, loops and they'll start playing. So let's have a look at now. So I'll just uh, tap, tap on here. And now I can then say like, okay, let's bring in some, like a beat in here. Now, why can't we hear that beat? Well, let's have a look. I think if we pull up the uh, mixer. Oh, you've got metering. Yes, which is quite nice. That kind of gives us a chance to, um, uh, so you split the screen into two there as well, right? Yeah, yeah, and this thing along the, on the right-hand channel lets us kind of, uh, we can sort of move things around, or we can, like for instance here, this makes the clips like full screen, or then, so I can put the clips at the top, uh, or I could, sw I could swap them over, etc. Um, so all of the names and what have you are brought in, for, they're sort of yes. sucked out of Ableton and kind of written onto yes. the screen there. We yes. don't have to configure any of that ourselves. No, but I should mention though that uh, we that you do have a little piece of software that you have to run, a touchable server, which is uh, which you run uh, and that enables... On the host computer. On the host computer and that enables this bi-directional communication then, you see. And that's really kind of a key feature because obviously you don't want to start typing names in. The fact that it can update from the screen is amazing. I mean, that's, well, it's a key. I mean, without it, it'd be next to useless, right? Yeah, and, and you know, this, this is one of these things that is quite nice, you know, uh, where you sit in and you've got the, say, the iPad on, on the lap and, and you've got lots of controllability, you know, of the main software, so it's quite nice. So we can see some of the other things that this can do now. Um, so, so, so as I say, let's bring in some other, let's launch some other things here. Some African drums. Oh, we can also trigger scenes which is a collection of clips. Is it quite responsive? Yeah, it's great. I mean, this is a lot to do with uh, just how, you know, your ad hoc network, just how... Uh, how you have it set up. How you have, set, have it set up. But it seems to respond pretty well. But bearing in mind that we are using it in a, in a kind of quantized sense where everything is is quantized. Right, so when you to the, the clips in, the clip comes in in the next bar. Exactly, right? to the global quantize. And what about more real-time control? Yes, well, it's great because what you can do with this one is you could, uh, for instance, any of the devices, if they're the Ableton Live specific devices, uh, let's get one up for an example here, devices. Uh, and then, um, so like on the master output, if I, if I was to touch here, You've got then, an auto filter. Uh, yeah, and uh, and the Ableton devices are all mapped sort of into. And it, the design there actually looks very similar to what it looks like on the on the screen. Yes. Right? So if we brought that up on the screen. Um, right. Okay. So we've yeah. got that, and then we've also got. 
that so similar yeah similar and uh, you know as, as they as they adjust things on here we it would uh, we would see it sort of the movement being replicated on the screen oh nice okay so we can adjust things like that but there's also another feature that uh, touchable's got built in which is quite cool which is an xy pad mode uh, so this is a little like a chaos pad and we can assign any parameter to this pad and we can have multiple parameters being adjusted simultaneously but also it's quite nice uh, in taking a leaf out of uh, Limo, Limo. Uh, in, in, oh, I see you've got that map to the filter. Ooh. Yeah, it's got filter, but you see, we can actually give, we can give... Um, <laughs> give it gravity and inertia. Gra gravity and inertia, yes. So, I mean, and, you know, you can choose which way gravity works. Like, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the dead cat bounce. In the dead cat bounce. Uh, you know, or we could have it sort of, whoop, or, you know, reverse gravity or... That's quite interesting. So you can get these kind of very gestural things going on yes yes so it's 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 quite interesting in that respect you know because you, you know you're you're taking you know interesting sort of touch related stuff and having it changing things on on the computer you might find though that this is quite a complicated piece of software and there's a, a there's a bunch of button pr like these they you know you've got certain features which are tucked underneath other features you know and um, you know you might find that it is all a little complex which I, I, relatively complex, you, you get around it. But if all you're actually looking for is a kind of clip launcher or with simpler functionality, then that's why you might want to look at Grid because Grid doesn't have a lot of this functionality, it, but it does kind of have the basic functionality and it does that rather well. Should we have a look? Yes. So now we're looking at Line Grid. grid. <laughs> and uh, we can see how it's quite similar to touchable in some respects, you With know. The same clip layout. Same clip layout, you know, it's following the colours on screen. Uh, but it's kind of a little cleaner in a way. There's, it's more minimal. And um, so we can do this thing if we touch here on the sides here, we can launch scenes. Oh, I like that stuff at the top. The... That's showing the progress of each of the clips then. So I'll uh, jump and change around here. So if... Uh, so we can see just how long each of the, the loops are. So, so you're changing clips, yes. you're changing scenes as well. Yes. Right. And with Grid uh, Pro, it gives us this mixer element as well, which is quite a simple mixer. It lets us adjust volumes, or we can change pan or sends. No metering now on that. No, no metering. And also, um, but the other thing that is actually the one thing that Grid has got that Touchable doesn't have is this. If I, if I hold this down and tap on a part, I can get up a piano roll editor. So this is allowing me to... And uh, I think if I... This is in percussion mode at the moment but I can change this to melodic mode. If it's in melodic mode, I can then put in uh, notes, Note that. Oh, okay. and et cetera, and uh, put them in. Uh, and it's relatively nice to use. I'm not sure how I, I want to get into doing a too much um, actual kind of grid mm -hmm. editing over an iPad with that sort of latency or whatever, but it's, yeah. but it's useful, right? Yeah, 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 pretty useful, but. Okay, and you can also, within this, you know, piano roll mode. You can oh, you can edit velocities edit as well. Edit velocities. Uh, That's quite neat, actually. Yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, so quite simple. Um, and one of Grid's big selling points is if we hit this button here, we can leap out and see an overview. Now, at the moment, I've only got a few clips. But if you had a massive overblown arrangement, <laughs> yeah. you could navigate it yeah. sort of and, and, through that way, right? And that navigational thing, we've not really seen that in any of the other controllers, so that's quite Is nice. that kind of like the box that you're controlling? That, yes. Like you see, right, okay. yes, yes, yes. So you'd be able to slide around it. Uh, and really, with Grid, that's pretty much it. There's not, there's not, a, lot of, there's not a lot to it. But what it does do, it does actually quite well. Yeah, it does look a lot cleaner. I mean, mm. I think there's something to be said for that in terms of, you know, yes. in the heat of the moment, it's very easy yes. to press the wrong kind of button. Yes. And in terms of responsivity and bi-directional control, I mean, has there been mm -hmm. any issues that you've had with kind of setting up or working that way? You know, there's a little bit of fussy getting things set up initially. Uh, and They both have to have 
server or daemons running, right? That's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, what have uh, we got here? Yeah, so the, there's the touchable one. And once it's running, this, you know, it'll just run in the background. But you have to run that first uh, if you're running touchable. Similarly with grid, you have to run the grid connector. But grid has an extra level of, you know, that you have to go to by going to your uh, MIDI network setup. And you have to kind of... Oh, so touchable doesn't require you to, to actually ad hoc network it. It just does it sort of automatically from... Yes. It, oh, yeah. that, that yeah. actually makes things quite a lot simpler then, It I does, imagine. yeah. So, you know... We want simplicity, so definitely. So does Touchable also, does it require wireless or can it work? How does it, does it have to have a wireless network to connect? I'm presuming it must do. I, or does it use a different protocol? Uh, I think that the, the, the Touchable little server app does that connection. It's, it says, I'm here, yes. and, and the, then the app... Uh, we'll see it. And, oh, yeah. See, whereas Grid, you know, you do have to just do that one extra level of connectivity. So. I did notice that Touchable seemed a little less so, but there was a couple of crashes when we were setting up for the show, right? Yes, I'm wondering if that's an iOS 6 related thing, because I'm using iOS 6 on my, on my iPad, so I'm not sure. But if it does crash, it loads straight back into exactly the same place where you left because it. Because it's pulling all the information from the it, Exactly. Session. We don't want it to crash, but it's not a disaster if it does. So really, they are pretty much the same thing, right? Well, kind of. I mean, the, the, the clip launcher part is the thing that's very that's similar. very common, right. Yeah, but, you know, uh, Touchable is the one that lets you get all this uh, fine control over the devices, which... And, and yeah, that, I mean, that, that looks really nice to be able to actually bring the devices into the touchscreen and, and access them. Does it do yeah. all of the devices or, or just some? Well, it'll do Ableton Live devices. I think some of the third-party ones, I think they, they would it would rely on... They'd need um, to be some community, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So pricing-wise, they're both very similar, actually. Uh, we've got Touchable comes in at about £17.50, and uh, Grid Pro mm. is... Uh, it's the same, I think. It's the same, uh, up $24.99. Dollars, but you yeah. can do... Well, yeah, if you wanted just the clip launcher, then you just get Grid, which I think is around £6.99. Yeah, $9.99. Nine, nine so. Yeah, uh, and then you, if you wanted to, then you can buy the mixer and you can buy the, the clip editor as uh, in-app in purchases, purchases. Uh, okay. yeah. Whereas with Touchable, it's just the, the, the single one-off price and you get it, get it all in there. So I hope that's helped you kind of see what's possible with uh, Ableton Live Control via the iPad. I would personally go for Touchable because I really like the, uh, the extra control and... Uh, you think the XY control of the, of the various parameters and the, uh, the device control is more appealing than perhaps uh, the, um, the, um, the, uh, the the piano roll editor, right? Yes, uh, and you know, I I like using extra devices as well, like maybe my Cuneo or something else. And and actually, the combination of the Cuneo and the iPad is quite an inspiring combo. And you don't even have to look at the computer at all. Then you can actually work with just the two. Or the Cuneo could be a MIDI keyboard. It could be anything. But you know, I, I like I like the fact that I don't need to go to the computer. And 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 a lot of the uh, one thing I available. didn't ask, I mean, can you go into track record and things like that from, from, the, from both of these applications? Kind of, yes. Uh, but Ableton Live has the two modes. It has the session view and it has the arrangement view. There's no support for the arrangement view in either of these apps. They really are both clip view. Clip, only, right. clip view. You can go into global record from Touchable, which will then let whatever you do record as a, uh, as a performance. But I think with... Um, with Grid, I think Grid is assuming that you're going to be using a combination of computer short, you know, com using your computer for shortcuts and the Grid for certain functions, you see. Right, gotcha. Yeah, whereas Touchable is maybe more self-contained. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of Ableton Live special. That was Grid by Line, <laughs> L-I-I-N-E dot com. Yeah, and then... Uh, Touchable by Touchable. Easy to remember. Yeah. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we do appreciate you not only viewing the show, but leave comments. It's really helpful for us to, yeah. to get feedback on the show. Please do, please do, because it helps us know what to look at next. And just, yeah. Yeah, any suggestions you've got for new apps or anything, just drop them in below. Yeah. So that's it for this week, uh, episode 18. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you later.